Uh, it's 10 years, believe it or not. A lot of people have been talking over the last week or so. 10 years since Crow Park and uh, the England match in particular jumps to mind. We have John Hayes in tears for the anthems very famously. We have Shane Horgan's try. People may forget David Wallace scored a try that day. We've dug out the footage. Uh, it was an amazing afternoon, so have a look here at uh, Wallace in action. Talk us through this. What are you doing here? I'm getting as low as I can, and thankfully Donica is there to give me that extra shunt sure. over the line for play to him. He didn't get the credit for that, but um, yeah, absolutely. What an amazing thing to do that in Crow Park against England on that day. You look fairly calm there, jogging back, but inside, what's going on? Inside, it's, there's a lot more to go, you know. Um, you're playing against England, and you know, I suppose the, the, the history was, was so relevant to everyone and, uh, and hit everyone so hard that you know, you just didn't want to let anyone down. So it was, it was just get back and, and go again. And yeah. uh, it, was, it was probably one of the most emotional games I have to say I've involved in. Hayes and tears in the anthem is the standout memory for lots of people. Did you get emotional during the anthem yourself that day? Did you generally? He's a big baby, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, I, I, obviously you were emotional, um, yeah. uh, but it was, I was very fearful. <laughs> I was very, very nervous before games anyway. Right. So. It was probably that's what I was going through, you know. Um, yeah. Just you know, the, the guys would feed off. The whiter I was, the more comfortable they were because <laughs> you know they knew it was a, we were at the right pitch. I think yeah. rugby players have the dream job and then have to get real jobs. And you have done it the opposite way, which is you had a job in an office and now you've gone for comedy <laughs> and your brilliant podcast, an Irishman abroad, the dream job. I presume zero regrets despite the uncertainty and the insecurity and the bad hours yeah. and all that stuff. Well, like no regrets whatsoever, but you're absolutely right. I was in an office job going, I don't know how I'm going to survive this long term. It just felt all wrong. And like I was going downhill fast <laughs> and I, like I really was turning into someone I didn't want to be. And it was actually my now wife that came home and said, why don't you just do what you want to do with mm. your life, which was stand up, and I never look back. Uh, and it's going brilliantly. I mean, it's going so well. I'm sure lots of people listen to an Irishman abroad. I'm sure you do. I'm getting nods in the never head. Never try and gauge that. Right? Okay, but never. Yeah, yeah. There are. There's a lot of listeners across the world, and we've had some of the uh, greatest Irish players in rugby ever yeah. play from O'Gara, O'Driscoll, uh, Keith Wood. We even had Jerry Flannery on at one mm. point. <laughs> <laughs> After this show, there's a good chance Dave Wallace may do it. I don't know. He yeah. kind of dodged the question earlier, <laughs> if I'm totally honest. I saw that. It was awkward. Now he's got a kidney. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not to bring down the mood, but I think it's important to, to reference it. Uh, you were a teammate of Anthony Foley's for such a long time. Uh, the overwhelming sense everybody had was just complete shock, and that was even people who didn't know him. I can't imagine what a shock it was for you. Do you even begin to digest that and uh, realise he's gone at this stage, months on? It's, it's a process, I think, yeah, um, because it was such a shock, you know, someone so young, um, uh, so suddenly, and I think for everyone else, you know, he was so much in the public eye. You know, Munster historically was a representative team, so it wasn't actually a club. Mm. Axel got his first cap in, for Munster, I think, in 95, which is when you kind of the whole European odyssey started. Um, and, and he, I suppose, represented the club for so many years um, as, a, as a figurehead, you know, as, as a player and as a coach. Um, so I think people identified him with being Munster. You know, I don't mm. think there, there was very few people, if any, who were involved in Munster for the tenure that he had, you know, the, the length of time. and, and also, I suppose how he um, he approached Munster and his 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 uh, attitude to it, and, and how he gave that feeling to other players around him, um, especially the younger players who are now we're seeing them peak and, and and come to fruition. A lot of that was was based on on Axel and and the guidance and I suppose the the mentoring that he gave them over the last few years. And uh, he, you know he he is. I was looking down through through a few articles from last year. You're saying, you know, watch out next year, year after this team right. are going to be serious, and uh, and they are. And um, you know, a, a lot of things have helped that on the way. But I think certainly, um, it's very sad that his passing has 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 had that effect, or has had mm. even that effect. It's his passing, but um, you know, what an effect and what a legacy he, he's left behind. And and the players are doing him proud week in week out. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about the weekend. I saw Shane Horgan writing at the weekend and he was saying France for the last 
five, six, seven years tactically behind everybody else. Mm -hmm. If they could organize themselves and let the flair do what the flair does, they'd be awesome. They can't seem to get it right. Are you very confident about Saturday or sneaking worries? Um, I'll, be, I'll be fairly confident, but it is a different French team. Like they're, they are playing with that flair, they're playing with the offload yeah. and, and their line breaks, they're, they're gone sky high. It's a very, very dangerous team on the attack. But technically, they, they're vulnerable, you know, and I think Joe Smith will be probably too smart for them. And, and uh, I think tactically, we might be, you know, a little bit too smart for them, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, presuming a lot of balls in the air and kicks in behind them, you know, challenging their, their, their wingers and getting them to turn. Um, but if, if they get ahead of steam, you know, their big, big physical pack, pick and moles, is, yeah. is, you know, a one-man uh, carrying machine, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he's surrounded by big, big men and, uh, you know, they have, they have a lot of potency, but um, hopefully we can, we can um, outsmart them. Right? Yeah, it's been a strange turn of events that Irish fans now expect to beat the French. We just, we beat the French given that, you know, for decades we yeah. didn't have a hope against them. And you feel sorry because, I mean, these guys, a lot of these guys are, are very young guys, you know, some of them in their first uh, uh, Six Nations campaign, yet there's talk about Grand Slam, you know, Brian Odriska, Ronig, they had 10 years before that was kind of thrown at them. Yeah. So you do feel there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of expectancy now that, that wasn't there in the past. Yeah, well, hopefully it goes well. Great stuff, lads. David Wallace, Charlotte Regan, everyone. <laughs>